Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. Well, it was as bad as it looked. In fact, it was even worse. I've had a lot of occasions to say that in the Trump years of American life, but this new example of Donald Trump's misconduct in office is about as clear as it gets. It comes directly from the former United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, arguably the most powerful and active district in the entire country. For two and a half years, that man you see there, Jeffrey Berman, served in that role as the head of that district during the Trump administration. Berman has written a new book out today in which he details several instances when Donald Trump abused the power of the Department of Justice. As Berman told Rachel Maddow last night, Trump and his DOJ repeatedly tried to use the Southern District to protect his allies and punish his enemies. I wanted people to understand the full scope of the outrageous and improper political interference by Trump's Justice Department in the cases of the Southern District of New York. Um, it demonstrates what Trump is capable of and what he's likely to do, and it also provides a frontline view of just how vulnerable our justice system is. Trump turned the department into his own personal law firm. He put in people who would do his bidding and they would, you know, uh, target Trump's political enemies and assist Trump's friends. And it was a disgrace. Now, we should note, as Rachel did last night, Berman did raise some alarms at the time. It wasn't all just kept tight-lipped until the book came out. And, of course, this kind of behavior is no surprise from the former president. In fact, targeting political enemies was one of the central promises, the central theme, arguably, of Donald Trump's 2016 campaign. Remember how often he called for his opponent, Hillary Clinton, to be locked up. He even replaced his first attorney general, Jeff Sessions, after Sessions failed to lock the right people up. And Trump routinely berated him for doing so on Twitter. Jeffrey Berman's stories from his time in the Southern District make it clear that behind the scenes, it was even worse than that. The ex-president's second attorney general, Bill Barr, and other senior officials, the Department of Justice, would actually call up Berman's office and explicitly tell them who they did or did not want the Southern District to prosecute. Berman recalls one instance in September 2018, two months before the midterm elections, when a DOJ official called his deputy. As the New York Times describes it, quote, after citing the recent prosecution of two Trump, prominent Trump loyalists, the officials said the office, which had been investigating Gregory Craig, a powerful Democratic lawyer, should charge him and do so by election day. According to Berman, the official told his deputy, quote, it's time for you guys to even things out. And Berman's office declined to prosecute Craig. Get this. The department sent the investigation to federal prosecutors in Washington, where Craig was indicted, tried on a single count of making false statements, was acquitted by a jury in less than five hours. Berman also details what happened when Bill Barr tried to push him out. Earlier today, he told my colleague Nicole Wallace about his strategy to get Barr to back down. At the very end of my tenure, there was a situation where, uh, you know, Barr was going to impose an outsider who he trusted in charge of the Southern District of New York. And at that point, I went public. I was noisy. You know, I don't think there's you, precedent. You played some killer, killer office politics. I, 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 I don't think yeah. there's a precedent in the Department of Justice for what I did. I sent out a press release and I told the entire country what Barr was trying to do, how he had crossed the line. And I used the language from the obstruction of justice statute. And it was because of that, yeah. in, very intentionally, and it was because of that very noisy exit that Barr backed down. Now, in the end, Barr did fire Berman, though Berman was able to put his uh, trusted deputy in charge. And as he told Rachel Maddow last night, the reason for what was exact for that was exactly what it looked like. Berman was a threat to Trump and his agenda. How was your work as U.S. attorney a threat to Trump's reelection? Well, at the time I was fired, the Southern District of New York was working on a, a, a couple politically sensitive cases. Uh, one of those cases is the Steve Bannon, we build the wall case. And we were very close to indicting that case around the time I got fired, and Barr knew about the case. And um, as you know, uh, th that case was indicted by the Southern District of New York, by Audrey Strauss, who took over as acting U.S. attorney 
uh, after I was fired, and she brought that prosecution. And then, uh, you know, President Trump pardoned Steve Bannon, which was an outrageous pardon. But that's one of the cases that we were investigating, and we were very close to indicting. And the, the other case was the Ukraine investigations arising out of the Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman uh, indictments. And that was something that we had been investigating for quite a while, and we continued to investigate for quite a while. And both of them were very sensitive. Now, as Berman mentions, the case against Steve Bannon has become notorious. After Berman was fired, federal investigation against Bannon continued. In August of 2020, U.S. postal inspectors arrested Bannon on board a Chinese billionaire's yacht in the Long Island Sound. He was charged with fraud and then subsequently pardoned by Donald Trump in Trump's final hours in office. That's after January 6th and after all Bannon did to promote the coup. That pardon, however, does not preclude Bannon from facing state charges. And just last week, he was charged by the Manhattan District Attorney with essentially the same crimes related to his alleged scheme to defraud donors to his We Build the Wall organization. And it looks like the prosecutors in New York have much of the same evidence against Bannon the Department of Justice had accrued. Now, the other investigation Berman cites as being particularly threatening to Donald Trump's re-election is the one around the ex-president's attempt to pressure Ukraine into investigating his then-opponent, Joe Biden. You might remember those two names Berman mentioned, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman. They were associates of Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, who kind of ran errands for Giuliani. They helped Giuliani in his pressure campaign with Ukrainian officials. According to Lev Parnas, they took their orders from Giuliani. In a 2020 interview, Parnas told Rachel Maddow he did not do anything without the consent of Giuliani or Donald Trump. Now, Lev and Igor have both been sentenced to prison time for their roles in that scheme, but Giuliani is walking around free. Well, we know he was also under investigation by the Southern District of New York as of 2019. In April of last year, the FBI searched his home and office, seized his phones and computers. Two months later, a federal judge appointed a special watchdog to review that seized material and recommended what prosecutors could view. Still, nothing has come of this investigation. Just last month, the Times reported Giuliani is unlikely to face charges. But Giuliani, like Steve Bannon, seems incapable of keeping himself out of legal trouble. While he may have avoided charges in that Ukraine scheme, he is now a target in the criminal investigation to election interference in Georgia, where he actively attempted to overturn the election. And there's every reason to believe the current January 6th federal investigation, which is growing larger and larger by the day, may end up on Giuliani's doorstep as well, given how intimately involved he was with helping Donald Trump plan and execute the insurrection. But of course, here's the thing. If Donald Trump were to be reelected, none of this would matter. That's the explicit promise of another Trump term. There would be more Bill Barrs at the Department of Justice, probably even more Craven figures than Barr, and more Rudy Giuliani's, and more Steve Bannon's, and there would be fewer Jeffrey Berman's standing up to do the right thing. They would be replaced by MAGA authoritarian lackeys, willing to convert the government into a ruthless weapon for Trump's personal use and power. And there would be no one standing in his way. But it's also the explicit warning for people like Berman who has now joined the legions of those who have left the circle of Trump's influence to warn in the loudest, clearest voice possible that it is exactly as bad as it looks.